pop quiz, hot shot. There's a bomb on a bus. Once the bus goes 50 miles an hour, the bomb is armed. If it drops below 50, it blows up. What do you do? What do you do? I'd want to know what bus it was. Just when I thought Hollywood had learned their lesson, they drop a big fat turd all over everyone's hopes and dreams. Keanu Reeves is probably one of the last good superstars out there today. He slowly and methodically built his career and leaned into certain roles like Neo and John Wick. As those franchises have grown tired and stale, there's one franchise that seems ripe for a sequel. But is a sequel really necessary? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the dumpster fire that is modern Hollywood. Before we get into it, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It helps out with the algorithm and it gets you the very best content out there. But anyway, let's get into it. Having grown up in the 80s and 90s, I am no stranger to good action flicks. Starting in the 1980s, Hollywood treated us to some of the best edge-of-your-seat action movies we've ever received. Movies like The Terminator, Rambo, Predator, and Bloodsport were all staples of my childhood. But there was one year in particular where humanity achieved perfection. 1994. Now, before you go off about the Rwandan genocide, hear me out. 1994 saw the best pop culture in history, hands down. In video games, we got Earthbound, Final Fantasy VI, Donkey Kong Country, Super Metroid, System Shock, and Tekken, to name a few. In music, we had the likes of Nirvana, Weezer, Alanis Morissette, Snoop Dogg, and most notably Biggie. Actually, that last one, Ready to Die, contained quite possibly the greatest rap song ever made, Gimme the Loot. And as far as movies go, holy God was 1994 an amazing year. We got The Lion King, Forrest Gump, True Lies, Pulp Fiction, and The Shawshank Redemption. I mean, fuck me, these are some of the best movies of all time, all packed into one year, 1994. But there was one movie that pretty much defined the police action genre, and that movie was Speed. The movie was a high-octane action thriller that followed LAPD officer Jack Traven, played by Keanu Reeves, and Annie Porter, played by Sandra Bullock, a civilian who found herself trapped on a city bus rigged with a bomb. The bomb will explode if the bus drops below 50 miles an hour. Jack must race against time to keep the bus moving while also trying to find a way to disarm the bomb and save the passengers. I mean, that is peak efficient storytelling right there. It has high stakes action, tension and suspense, interesting character dynamics, a memorable villain, and some very iconic moments. It was everything you could possibly want in an action movie. Hollywood knew they had a hit on their hands and they needed to put out a sequel as soon as possible to capitalize on that success. But like Disney in the 2020s, they rushed a sequel to market and well, the result was pretty atrocious. The sequel script was so bad that Keanu Reeves passed on reprising the role of Jack Traven. And ever since then, the franchise has been relegated to the dustbin of history. Until now. The pop culture website Screen Rant put out a story that Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock are in talks to reprise their roles for another sequel, Speed 3. How would that even work? Both actors are still in pretty decent shape. Keanu Reeves proved he still had it in multiple John Wick films, and the wonders of Botox and facelifts have kept Sandra Bullock looking okay. But both actors are also pushing 60. Could a sequel worthy of the original be feasible? I mean, it's been done before. After all, Tom Cruise came back from multiple Mission Impossible sequels and even Top Gun Maverick, and the dude is 61 years old. So it is possible, but should it even be done? We all know that just because you can doesn't mean you should. The original Speed holds a special place in my heart. I watched the shit out of it when I was a kid, and when I showed it to my 13-year-old nephews, they also grew to love it just as much as I did. And that's my point. Hollywood, and especially Disney, has had a habit of taking once great franchises with beloved legacy characters and completely destroying them. Modern Hollywood writers love to deconstruct characters down to nothing. 
And if they're progressives, which most of them are, then they'll insert a healthy dose of the message into it. That's how we get pathetic beta male cucks as male characters and omnipotent and omniscient Mary Sue girl bosses. What I fear most is modern writers deconstructing the characters of Jack Traven and Annie Porter. Because we can't have a damsel in distress in 2024. Women should be portrayed as capable characters of their own that save themselves. Well, as we're seeing now, fourth wave feminism is collapsing before our very eyes. It turns out that women do want a strong man to protect them and save them. They want to retain their femininity and be girly. And hell, guys want them to. Fourth wave feminism has also destroyed a generation of men, turning them into pathetic beta male cucks to be domineered by strong female characters they play against. So do I really want to see a speed three where Annie saves Jack? Not really. But what do you guys think about all this? Do you think we need a speed three? And do you think modern writers can do these legacy characters justice? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one.